People's National Party is urging Indicom to immediately start an investigation into allegations of misconduct and misuse of power within the Jamaica Defense Force. According to the People's National Party, these allegations which were made against the Jamaica Defense Force in an article on Sunday has generated significant concern around how allegations of misconduct and mismanagement by the Jamaica Defense Force, specifically in relation to the Defense Act, is being misused to harm females who speak out against this situation. According to the report, after ending a relationship with a fellow colleague, a female was given by duty and eventually charged under Section 75 and 46 of the Defense Act. The lady was given 14 days in military detention. There was no information to suggest that the male counterpart was also given similar treatment for his involvement with the lady. The discrepancies in this treatment would be discriminatory and a reflection of the chauvinism typical of many military organizations globally. Senator Donna Scott Motley, the People's National Party's spokesperson on justice and gender affairs, has said that she is appalled at the apparent situation towards discipline and order within the JDF. It is totally unacceptable that these two parties engage in the same act of misconduct and the lady with the lower rank is given the treatment that is harsh, whilst the male enjoys protection by virtue of his officer rank. This is intolerable at any other and is worse now in the age of similar issues where women must be assured of protection under the law. In the interim, Shadow Minister of National Security Peter Bontina said the no comment from the Jamaica Defense Forces media officer is completely unacceptable and quite inconsistent with modern standards of transparency and accountability in governance. The military is accustomed to a culture of self-governance, but they are certainly not entitled to mistreatment of any citizen nor the public's trust. The creation of Indicom in 2010 signaled a new paradigm in the oversight and independent investigation of these issues in relation to human rights of citizens by the security forces. Peter Bontin further went on to state that if a lady is guaranteed the same rights as every other citizen under the Constitution of Jamaica and the Defense Act does not supersede the Constitution, the People's National Party has said it is critical that this specific investigation be expedited as well as a wider inquiry into the alleged culture of these issues of mistreatment against ladies that is allegedly existent in the Jamaica Defense Force. A man has been kept in custody, allegedly for taking the life of his stepson. A man who was charged with the passing of his stepson in 2020 was remanded in police custody when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court last Friday. Rose, also called Philip of Seaview Gardens in St. Andrew, is charged with the passing of Galen Buchanan on a Spanish Town Road in St. Andrew. A hearing in the case is to be held on Rose's next court appearance to determine whether the matter should be transferred to the High Court for trial. Rose was remanded in custody until February 1. According to the police, Galen went missing on Tuesday, January 21st, and he was found at 3.15 p.m. by residents in the arbor at Royal Palm, Bournemouth Gardens in Kingston 2 area. On January 23, 2020, his hands were tied. Rose, who was found in Trelawney, was taken into custody two days later after the gift was discovered and was charged with taking the life of another on February 4, 2020 by detectives from the Major Investigation Division. The accused, who was 40-year-old at the time of his arrest, has been in custody since that time. It was recently granted to a Jamaican who was set for a deportation flight from the United Kingdom. A Jamaican-born man who was being held in detention since the cancellation of his deportation to Jamaica from the United Kingdom has been ordered to be granted bail. The man who is alleged to be a dangerous individual involved in serious substances 
has only been identified as RS, was initially one of 50 persons who were set to board a UK home office charter flight to Jamaica on December 2, 2020. In the end, only 13 of the reported 15 persons who were slated for the flight made a trip to Kingston, Jamaica. This after some of the men, including RS, were granted last-minute reprieves by the United Kingdom courts. Since that time, the Jamaican who was previously imprisoned for seven and a half years for dealing in Class A serious substances has remained in custody at an immigration detention center where the Home Office prepares for another deportation flight that would take place early in 2021. The attorneys for this man argued that he was suffering from severe depression and post-traumatic stress disorder and should be released from detention. On Wednesday, the UK High Court judge, Corner QC, ruled that keeping the Jamaican in custody was unlawful. He ordered UK Home Secretary Priti Patel to release Aris on bail. Additionally, Judge Corner ruled that Jamaican's mental health is very seriously impaired and detention is making it worse for RS. He concluded that the lack of a clear time scale for his deportation means that he should be released, adding that he believes that there is a strong prima facie case that this continued detention is unlawful. In outlining the case against RS, the High Court shared that he first arrived in the UK in 2002, a year after he had been reportedly taken forced and armed by a dangerous group in Jamaica during his time in the United Kingdom. He served time for dealing in serious substances. The Jamaican claimed that he was harmed in 2016. He was released in August 2019 and after periods on bail was taken into immigration detention in November of 2020. It is not yet clear if he has been released from the detention center by the UK Home Office. A man who was charged with taking the life of his wife, a school teacher in Manchester in July 2019, was again granted bail in the sum of $1 million when he appeared in the Manchester Circuit Court on Friday. The accused, Campbell, was charged with the passing of Bishop Gibson High School teacher, 43-year-old Davis Campbell, following a ruling by the Director of Public Prosecutions. As conditions of the bail offer, presiding High Court Judge Justice Chester Stamp ordered Campbell to not return to Manchester unless to attend court and not to make contact with his wife's family members. Further, he is to reside in the parish of St. James. Campbell is to return to court on October 1st when his trial is scheduled to start. Davis Campbell was harmed at her home in Melrose District in Manchester on Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. According to the Manchester Police, the report is that sometime after midnight, a group of dangerous individuals went into the teacher's home while she was asleep with her husband. The dangerous individuals reportedly demanded money and when none was forthcoming, opened shellings during which Davis Campbell was hit several times. Her husband reportedly escaped unharmed from the incident. Shortly after the incident, the teacher's husband was taken into police custody following conflicting statements that were reportedly given by him to police investigators. Campbell was later granted bail in the sum of $1 million with strict reporting conditions when he appeared in the Manchester Parish Court in September of 2019. Bail is usually automatically revoked when a matter is transferred from the lower court to the high court and a new bail offered. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think about all of the matters that have been discussed in this session. What of this gentleman who has been given a second bail after allegedly taking the life of his wife in 2009 of the Jamaican that has been granted bail from the United Kingdom court in relation to serious substance charges and what of the man that has been placed in custody after taking the life of a